Hello and good afternoon. Thank you once again for tuning into my channel. I do appreciate it. I'm not scripting this video and the reason is is that if I tried to script it it would take me way too long to make it and I simply would never make the video. So I'm just going to work through this and try to present a story that I came across. Okay, so first of all, I'm in my mid-30s and I'm not so proud, but I will tell you that I cringe a little bit at men these days and the way I see it, men tend to hold on to their youth and they seem to still have interest in the things that were interesting to them when they were kids. So it's not embarrassing anymore for a man to say that he loves uh, superheroes or Ninja Turtles or He-Man or Transformers or any of these things he grew up with. Now when I was a kid, grown men did not play video games. Uh, most of them did not read comic books and I think I'm still of that generation. So put it like this. I always, I always talk about a lot of things at once. But I take the subject of mud flood and everything that surrounds it uh, very, very seriously. So when I go ahead and make a video on something like He-Man, um, I run the risk of damaging the credibility of mud flood and making it look silly. I realize I'm doing that. But what I came across as far as the storyline in He-Man to me was so critically important that I, I have to retell it and um, all I can ask is that you the viewer try to look past the the juvenile cartoon pictures and characters and try to see try to see the storyline behind what He-Man is all about. Okay, I made a research video to prepare for this. That's worth watching too. It's just me reading off of uh, popular a popular website which discusses He-Man. Okay, so two minutes and thirty seconds into the video, uh, where to begin? Okay, so I was here at home watching television. We have. We don't have cable, but we have Netflix, which is like internet TV. It's a subscription service which hosts TV shows and movies, and it's popular here in Canada. And actually, it's a little different, but it's popular in the United States as well. Now, that might be so obvious to you. Why am I explaining what Netflix is? Well, um, I'm taking into consideration that people around the world are watching my channel and they might not understand what Netflix is. Well, you don't really have to know what Netflix is, but uh, Netflix has just recently posted the old He-Man cartoon series that you can watch. And they posted all the old episodes and they posted all the old episodes from the 1980s and I was just looking at the episode titles with no intention of watching He-Man but the very first episode in the TV series is called it's called The Cosmic Comet The Cosmic Comet now I don't want to try to re-explain everything that I've talked about on my channel but I am talking about Mud Flood and if you've been following the score at home, um, whether it's my channel or perhaps maybe Martin's channel, um, there's a lot of talk of comets historically and they're a supposed cause for the mud flood event or at least a reset event from you know an older civilization to the present one, one we have today. And that's such a heavy topic to try to re-explain but um, long story short, I'm interested in mud flood and comets. Mud comets being a component of mud flood and the historical story. And so when I saw the He-Man episode, 
the cosmic comet, well, I simply had to learn more. So I've gone onto the internet and looked at a few websites and tried to do some research. Now I'm just going to try and deliver the most essential information as not to make this a long video, so bear with me. So just in case you're completely unfamiliar with He-Man and Masters of the Universe, it was a children's TV series, so I'll just rely on the Wikipedia definitions. He-Man is the principal character of a series of comic books and several animated television series characterized by his superhuman strength. In most variations, he is the alter ego of Prince Adam. He-Man and his friends attempt to defend the realm of Eternia and the secrets of Castle Greyskull from the evil forces of Skeletor. And it is painful for me to read this material, okay? Uh, it is a cartoon, and it's slightly embarrassing. Maybe that's my ego talking. Okay, so the TV series is the the Masters of the Universe. So once again, just the Wikipedia definition, just to get you acquainted with it if you're not familiar. Masters of the Universe, commonly abbreviated M-O-T-U, and sometimes referred to as He-Man, after the lead hero, is a media franchise created by Mattel. The main premise revolves around the conflict between between the heroic He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe, and the secret identity of Prince Adam, against the evil sorcerer Skeletor on the planet Eternia, with a vast lineup of supporting characters in a hybrid setting of medieval sword and sorcery and sci-fi technology. A spin-off series with a similar premise, She-Ra, or She-Ra, Princess of Power, features He-Man's sister, She-Ra, and her struggle against the evil horde. Kind of sounds like Genghis Khan. Let's not get... I don't want to get sidetracked. And her struggle against the evil horde on the planet Eternia, or Etheria. It's saying Etheria here. I thought it was called Eternia. Anyway, since its initial launch, the franchise has spawned a variety of products, including multiple lines of action figures, five animated television series, several comic series, video games, a daily newspaper, comic strip, and two feature films, one animated, one live action. Okay, so this is just off the top of my head, and I'm going to get right to the point and try to answer the question you might be asking why am I talking about He-Man? Why is this important? Why is he discussing this? Well, yes, this first episode is talking about a comet. I actually watched the episode and what was even interesting as well when I watched the episode is that there was a lot of uh, instances where characters, particularly evil characters, get thrown in mud. And I think Skeletor even has a comment at one point, like, all this mud all the time, or... I, I'm not re-saying it very well. If you look at the cast of characters in He-Man, I don't think it's a stretch to see how there is probably a biblical basis. And if you were familiar with Gnostic texts, which I don't really promote, like the Nag Hammadi and things like that, I'm not promoting that, but there certainly are overtones of things like the Demiurge and Sophia Pistis, and if you've seen or read on the origin of the world, you can't see it, but if you've read that, where you have this Pistis Sophia character coming down and creating Adam, or even the Adam and Eve story, well, there are definitely some very similar type of themes within He-Man. He-Man himself is named Prince Adam, right? You know, there's 
the Egyptian trinity, Isis, Ra, was it Horus, Set? I, I don't know what these are, but anyway, uh, He-Man's sister is she, Ra, right? One thing that struck me is one of the evil characters who's closely related to Skeletor is the Beast. The Beast. And is this the primal nature of man? You know, the concept of the Beast is mentioned in the biblical book of Revelation, right? So He-Man is clearly dealing with some very heavy um, occult, even, themes. I just look at He-Man's chest, right? He's got the Maltese cross on it, right? Okay, you know what I think? Then I might actually just read a website synopsis of this episode of He-Man, and I'll just try to put great pictures with it, because it says it better than I can. I don't want to have to try to re-explain in my own words what the Cosmic Comet was about. It'd be a lot of work. So I'm just going to read it and put the pictures to the script. And I'll give credit to the person who wrote this article. I wonder if we have a name for this. The person who did this. I will if your name is present. Um, there's no name coming up. Well, no matter, I will leave the Wikipedia... Where it's called Wiki Grayskull. I will leave the link for that in the description below. Uh, hopefully uh, at the beginning of the links, so you can get it right away. Okay, so I'm just going to read. The Cosmic Comet. The Cosmic Comet is a first season ep episode of the animated television series He-Man and the Masters of the Universe produced in 1983, story by Tom Ruger, and teleplay by Tom Ruger and Larry Dettilio, directed by Steve Clark. Synopsis. At Castle Grayskull, Evil Lynn and Beast Man are attempting to storm the Grim Fortress. When a comet flies above their heads, Evil Lynn is able to harness its magical power and, bring the, and brings the door of the castle down, only to find herself facing He-Man, Battle Cat, and Man at Arms inside. The two villains are quickly defeated, but the sorceress warns the heroes that the attack was only a test of the cosmic comet's power. She urges He-Man to visit Zagraz, the keeper of the comets, in the home atop Zagraz Mountain. At the royal palace, King Randor gives Man-at-Arms, Prince Adam, Tila, and Orko permission to set forth on this on this secret mission. Soon afterwards, Skeletor, Evil Lynn, and Beast Man seize full control of the Cosmic Comet, even as the heroes arrive at Zagraz Mountain. Zagraz, the wizard, explains that the, comet, the Cosmic Comet was produced by his own foolishness and relates how he once tried to control two comets that were wandering in space. He used too much power in his spell and destroyed one of the comets, leaving the other lonely and full of rage. To me, I mentioned in my research video, this reminds me of like the two winding snakes of the caduceus you see in the medical symbol. Uh, I'll let you be the judge on whether that's an accurate comparison. This stuff is pretty mystical anyway. Okay, Skeletor commands the comet to send three bolts at Zagra's mountain, where they grow into monstrous creatures. Out of sight of the others, Adam transforms into He-Man and destroys the creatures, and Orko sequesters the resulting fragments of his sleeve. He-Man takes an unconscious Zagraz to Castle Grayskull, where the sorceress believes she can revive him. Period. The heroes take the attack track to Snake Mountain. That's just like a promotional toy for the series, right? The attack track. But Snake Mountain is where Skeletor lives. Okay, so... Uh, the, where the sorceress believes she can revive him, the heroes take the attack track to Snake Mountain, but are quickly overpowered by the comet-charged Skeletor and Evil Lin, and the sorceress is forced to magically teleport them back to the castle. Zagraz, this is the old comet keeper, the old man, Zagraz infor informs them that comet pieces could be used to make a new comet, Orko produces his collection of fragments, and the sorceress fuses them into a new comet. Tila 
Man-at-Arms, Sorceress, and He-Man stand around the comet, while Zagraz encourages them to fill it with love and goodness. When the cosmic comet, at Skeletor's behest, streaks towards Greyskull, He-Man leaps into the air and fights the cosmic comet until Zagraz is ready to release the new comet. The two comets collide, releasing the hate and anger. Skeletor is disappointed when he discovers Castle Greyskull is still intact before the comet attack him and force him to flee and the royal at the royal palace Zagraz attempts to teach Adam his comet control technique but when the prince becomes distracted one of the practice globes chases after Orko okay that should sum up the the episode okay so this is in no particular order but I just remember I wanted to drop this detail so this is a little disjointed but the beast man is a character in the popular toy line and cartoon series Masters of the Universe, the savage right-hand man of Skeletor. He has control over many wild creatures and has brute strength. So is this like the Demiurge in Gnostic literature? Sorry if you're not familiar with that. That's what it reminds me of. Okay, so unfortunately, now I'm like 15 minutes into my recording. I've given a synopsis of this episode and my goodness, I'm getting close to the length of time it would take to actually go watch this episode. And I will leave a link for that in the description below as well. Okay, um, I'd like to talk about things that are specifically related to mud flood and comets and history, as it seems to have allusion to in He-Man. So once again, I'm just going to read from this script from this website because it says it better than I could. And I'll try to put some nice pictures to what you're watching. Okay, so you, you want to know what I think? I'm going to get right to the point. I think that this story of He-Man is a thinly veiled version of our own present reality. So there you go. I said it. That's why I think this story is important. Okay, if you go to this wiki Grayskull page which discusses He-Man related stuff, it will give you lengthy articles about the universe that He-Man lives in. So now I'm just going to try and give you um, the definition of Eternia, which is this world that He-Man lives on. I'll just read it. Eternia is the name of the main planet in the Masters of the Universe toy collection and animated series, The Origins. According to the search, I guess that's an episode, and the 1987 motion picture, Eternia is at the center of the universe. Although little mention in the franchise at the planet's center lies the Star Seed, a spark left over from the creation of the universe. Possessing it would grant infinite power to its holder. Skeletor, upon discovering this information, tries to obtain it, but He-Man is able to get it first. After resisting its corrupting influence, he then gives it to Zodok, Zodak, who disposes of it. In another episode, it is noted that Eternia exists at the juncture of alternate universes, which is an explanation for why the laws governing both magic and technology work on Eternia. Prehistory. This is lengthy, but I think I should probably read it. In most continuities, Eternian civilization is founded upon the remnants of an older society that possessed advanced technology and powerful sorcery. Details about the ancients, and it does say ancients here. I should click on that and open that and read it separate. <coughs> Details about the ancients are intentionally vague and are often unknown to the main characters due to the history being lost in a planet-wide crisis such as the Great Wars. Now, I am going to read about the Great Wars. I wish I could have started with this, but I think it's almost the most important. Legend and myth notwithstanding, the recorded history of Eternia usually dates back no further than the creation of Castle Greyskull. The powers of Greyskull, the legend begins, reveals that prehistoric Eternia featured dinosaur-like monsters, giants, and cavemen. Some of these dinosaurs are preserved within Eternia's tar swamps. Some of Eternia's ancient civilizations, such as the Osirians, possessed very advanced technology and left many ruins and artifacts behind. Preternia, Preternia was menaced by King Hiss and the Snakemen, 
until the ancients imprisoned them in another dimension. The old excuse me, the oldest being still alive on Eternia is an enormous sentient tree named Sky Tree. See, I left that pause intentionally to emphasize what I just said. The second oldest is Granamir, ruler of the dragons of Dark Smoke, who has always envied the tree's status. Okay, I don't want to read all this stuff. It seems like I'm getting away from what I want to talk about. Okay, there is a Grayskull Wikipedia article for the Ancients, which defines it very quickly. The Ancients are another name for Ancient Ones, who were composed of both humans and non-humans, and largely ruled Eternia before the rise of the Ape Clan and Snake Clan as the leading human nations on the planet, and finally the united government of Eternia by King Jared. They thrived during the Preternia era. Okay, now I'm going to read this in close to entirety, and this is almost the thing I really wanted to start with which was the Great Wars mentioned in this He-Man series. Because I think it's simply just talking about the world we live in today. Uh, I'll try and reserve comment and let you be the judge yourself. Uh, maybe I'll leave a few comments when I finish reading this. Okay, the Great Wars are a series of epic conflicts in several versions of Masters of the Universe continuity. They frequently serve as a plot device either to distinguish present-day Eternia from prehistoric times or to explain the absence of reliable information about legendary artifacts such as Castle Grayskull. Kind of like a pre-mud flood building. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Okay, early mini-comics. The Great Wars are first mentioned in He-Man and the Power Sword. Writer Donald F. Glutt put no thought into the history of the Great Wars. The premise was simply an easy way for him to present a concept without having to explain it. Accordingly, little is established about the conflict itself. It serves primarily to convey the notion that Eternia was once a highly advanced society until the wars reduced it to a barbaric post-apocalyptic wasteland with little knowledge of the previous era. To me that sounds like Atlantis and now. Okay. Uh, don't want to be condescending or browbeat. Okay. Uh, the characters are familiar with science and magic, but it is implicit that any technology or sorcery predating the Great Wars is inherently super superior to modern works, and often incomprehensible to present-day Eternians. So, the technology they had in the past was superior to the present. Almost like the way 19th century technology, and particularly architectural energy-gathering devices we see on old buildings, almost looks that way to our present eyes. I know I said I'd leave comments to the end, but here I go. Okay, continuing reading. When the goddess presents He-Man with the weapons and equipment she has been guarding, she implies their quality by stating that they were created by scientists centuries before the Great Wars. Skeletor later claims that a hole between dimensions was opened during the Great Wars through which he was thrown from his native dimension into Eternia. And that's a little bit of a scary idea, but Skeletor himself is this, like, evil supreme ruler, and he's basically th thrown from his dimension onto Eternia. Well, we hear about a being that falls from heaven and was kicked out of heaven. It's not really explicitly stated in the Bible, but it's a story that really surrounds the Bible, and that's the story of Lucifer, right, in the fall. There are references in the Bible. Uh, actually, I have my Bible open, and... Now that I'm talking about it, yeah, uh, look up uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 18 and 19. And I know some people differ on whether Lucifer and Satan is the same thing. I don't even want to touch that one, but go take a look at that quote. Okay, so forgive me for talking about too many different things at once, but I don't know. The depth of this story blows my mind, and it's strange that it's in a children's series. Okay, where was I in reading? I'm not sure. Okay, uh, Skeletor later claims that a hole between dimensions was opened during the Great Wars, through which he was thrown from his native dimension into Eternia. In King of Castle Greyskull, 
This is a different episode of He-Man. I didn't watch this. I've only watched one episode so far. He-Man remarks that Castle Grayskull was built before the Great Wars. So, it's a carryover from uh, the ancients to the moderns. So this is a pre-Mud Flood castle. Okay. Filmation Era. The Great Wars are never referenced in He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, or She-Ra, Princess of Power. However, the backstory of the this version of Eternia does suggest similar wars. And actually, uh, I guess I should read the next part. The Masters of the Universe Bible, I guess that's a book, describes a series of wars on the evil world of Infinita, Infinita, Infinitia, which only ended when the last of the two warring factions each activated their ultimate weapons simultaneously sending several of the combatants leaders through a space portal to Eternia which they decided to conquer sounds like the um, kind of like Nephilim fallen angels sorry really heavy stuff I know children's story can you imagine making kids watch this yikes after the infinitan infinitan of invasions is repelled, and to prepare for the day, the evil might return to the Council of Elders, create Castle Grey's Skull to store their knowledge until a champion emerges to use it. These concepts were abandoned without ever being used in either animated series. Okay, maybe I'll stop there. There's links if you want to read further. Okay, um, Castle Grey Skull has a definition on this website. And because I am on the subject of mud flood, that's something I talk about. Uh, I'm just going to read the definition quickly as to Castle Grayskull. Castle Grayskull is a fortress located on the planet Eternia. It forms a central location in the Masters of the Universe comic animation universe and also appears in the 1987 live action adaptation. In the series, it is the target of numerous attacks by Skeletor, Hordak, and the Snake Men all of whom believe that the secrets inside will allow them to conquer Eternia and become the titular masters of the universe. Centuries ago, during the Great Wars, Castle Grayskull was first built as the temporary seat of the legitimate governor government of Eternia when the royal palace in the traditional capital of Eternos was occupied by King Hiss and the Snake Men. During the Great Wars, and until the reign of King Grayskull, Castle Grayskull was also a center of religion, particularly the worship of Eternia's goddess. More recently, Castle Grayskull was the home of the titular sorceress of Castle Grayskull, with King Grayskull's wife, Queen Vina, <coughs> being the first sorceress. Vina was succeeded by Kudak Ungol, who in turn was succeeded by Tila Na, the current, current sorceress of Grayskull. So is that the story of Atlantis? thinly veiled and I'm not such a proud man but forgive me it does hurt my pride a little bit to talk about a kids show uh, it is embarrassing to me but hopefully you can see the reasons why I discussed that woohoo I kept it under a half an hour so this shouldn't be too hard to put pictures to okay thanks for watching and uh, yeah take it easy